Hello and welcome to episode 1 on our series of 3D shapes. Episode 1 is going to be going over 2D shapes, just a quick recap of 2D shapes. So before we begin I just need to give you some key words that you need to know the definitions of. Uh, those are parallel, perpendicular and area. So the area is how much space a shape takes up and we usually denote that with uh, squared, centimeter squared, meter squared, whatever and it's because of how many one by one squares fit into that shape. For parallel, it's where two or more lines never meet. Best way to think about it is like train tracks. They will never meet, otherwise trains would always get derailed. And perpendicular is where lines meet at 90 degrees. Now with parallel and perpendicular, there are some notations that you need to be aware of. So for parallel lines, they are denoted with arrows drawn on the line. So those two lines will be parallel. Even if they don't look parallel, if they have those two arrows, they are parallel. And perpendicular is denoted by a little square to represent that 90 degree angle. So here we have a rectangle. I'm going to give you a chance to think what dimensions do we need to work out the area of this rectangle and what other shapes would be similar. Have a pause in the video and thinking about those two questions. Okay, so for what shapes would be similar, similar to a rectangle, a square uses the same sort of method to work out the area. And the two dimensions that you need are the base and the perpendicular height. Now with squares and rectangles, we're very lucky. They are all perpendicular. So the lines are perpendicular to each other. So it's very easy to find the perpendicular height and the base. Very straightforward for rectangles and squares. Another type of shape we have is a parallelogram. Now parallelograms can be looked at as tilted rectangles. So because the lines are still parallel and we've just tipped the rectangle over, the area would still stay the same. So we can pretty much use the same method. Uh, so we still need the perpendicular height and the base. And we just multiply those two together to get the area of those shapes. And you might be thinking, well, why does this work? Because we always want to know why things work, not just how things work. Uh, if we take this parallelogram right here and we see there's a triangle there that we can have and we'll just shift that triangle over there because we've cut it off and moved it to that side disappears from the right hand side and we are left with a rectangle so as you can see it's pretty much the same you do the perpendicular height multiplied by the base now the issue with parallelograms are they're not as amazing as rectangles and squares they don't always have perpendicular heights given so you might need to do some extra math to work out a perpendicular height but that's what we want to use. We do not want to use the slanted height. We want to use the perpendicular height. Moving forward. Triangles. Triangles are pretty straightforward. This is a right angle triangle. So this makes our life a little easier. For triangles, we have a base and a perpendicular height. And the area of a triangle is the base times the perpendicular height divided by 2. And we will always need a perpendicular height. Now you, may, may, you may be asking yourself, well, Mr. Chowdhury, what if we don't have a perpendicular height? Well, it's very easy to find one. So here are two triangles, not right angle triangles. The bases are pretty straightforward. They're on the bottom. And the perpendicular height would be that one. You can either measure that on the inside or the outside of the shape. It does not matter. We are looking from the base to the highest point of that triangle. That's the shape we're looking for. We're not looking for any slanted heights. We are looking for nine heights that are perpendicular. So they have to be at 90 degrees to the base. So here are two other types of triangle. There's the bases. There's the perpendicular heights. Now you may be asking, well, why does that work? Why is it height times base divided by two? Well, here we have a triangle. And all I've done is split that triangle across the perpendicular height and then flipped it, opened it up, re rearranged it. So I've got a rectangle. And to work out the area of a rectangle, we know it's just base times height. Well, I've added two more triangles. Those triangles are the exact same as the ones inside. Like that triangle and that triangle are exactly the same. And that triangle and that triangle are exactly the same. So I've doubled the size of that triangle. So to work out the area of the triangle, I have to half the area of that rectangle. So it would just be height times base divided by 2. Right, so this shape you may not have come across before. I'm going to give you a second to pause it and think about what it's called and what its key characteristics are. Okay, 
So this shape is called a trapezium. Uh, in America, they're called trapezoid. So if you are doing some research online or you're drawing some questions online, it says trapezoid. It means trapezium. The word is trapezium that you're looking for because we're in the UK. And the key characteristics is they have exactly one set of parallel lines. As you can see, this one has one set of parallel lines denoted by the arrows. And this one has one set of parallel lines denoted by the arrows. Now, these dashes tell me that this length and this length are exactly the same, making this top trapezium an isosceles trapezium and this bottom trapezium a right angled trapezium now you may be asking how do i work out the area of a trapezium well area of a trapezium is very straightforward you take a and b you add them together you divide it by two and you multiply it by the perpendicular height as you can see the consistent thing through all of these shapes is we are always using the perpendicular height with trapeziums we need to be very careful we use the correct sides when we are adding them up we want to use the perpendicular side so for example on the top one those two lines are perpendicular and on the bottom one those two lines are perpendicular so here's what i'd like you to have a go i'd like you to look at these shapes pause the video have a look at these shapes which ones are trapeziums and which ones aren't uh, ideally you'd have this printed out and highlight you can highlight them but just have a go at it now please Okay, if you've done this correctly, you would recognize that the trapeziums consist of this orange one at the bottom is a trapezium because that line and that line are parallel. This red one is a trapezium because this line and this line are parallel and it's a quadrilateral. This one is a trapezium. These two lines are parallel, therefore it is a trapezium. This green one is a trapezium. These two lines are parallel, still a trapezium. And this one is also a trapezium these two lines are parallel therefore it's a trapezium and the rest of them aren't this one has too many sides to be a trapezium and this one has no sets of parallel sides so well done if you got all of those correct if you didn't just keep telling yourself keep asking yourself where are the parallel lines there can only be exactly one set there can't be two only one set of parallel lines so how does that work how does the area of a parallel Sorry, a area of a trapezium formula works. So here we have a trapezium. I've got the height drawn in, perpendicular height, there it is. And I've got the parallel lines labeled A and B. What I've done is I've doubled the size of it. I've just taken it, flipped it, and stuck it together. So now I have two trapeziums of exactly the same size, which have made a big parallelogram. Now I know how to work out the area of a parallelogram. The area of a parallelogram is going to be the base, which in this case is A plus B. There we go, A plus B on the bottom, the base, and then I multiply it by the height. However, I don't want two of these bases. I only want one. I don't need it twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to halve it. So all I've done is I've taken the A plus B, I've taken the base, and I've halved it, and I've multiplied it by the height. So when you have a trapezium, you do the two parallel lines added together, divide that by two, and then multiply it by the height. And that should give you your area of a trapezium. So there's one other 2D shape that we haven't really covered, uh, and that is circles. Our circles are fantastic. They work really well. I, I'm a big fan of circles. And the two things you need to know how to work out on a circle is the circumference and the area. So we're going to focus on the area. We're going to work out the area. So if I just open this up, this is our area of a circle formula it's very straightforward to see so we're just going to start it and you can have a look at how it works so there we go so that's how the area of a circle works We've basically created a triangle, We've created a triangle where it's the tri area of a triangle is a half base times height, which we already know. And it will be a half of the circumference, which is the base and the radius, which is this thing. But it's not just the radius. It's a radius plus uh, it's just the radius here. There you go. That's what the height is. <coughs> Sorry. And then if you have a look to work out the circumference, it's just... Uh, two lots of the radius times pi 
And if I expand this, I'll get pi r squared. And that's how you would work out the area of a circle. Hopefully that animation's helped a little. Uh, the circumference as is pretty straightforward. So if you have a look at this animation, wonderful little animation there, uh, I can take the area of the circle. There we go. I can make it bigger. Let's make it a bit bigger. Grab the diameter. Hopefully this works. There we go. And we can have a look. So this is one diameter. Now we're going to unpeel this circle to see what happens and how many diameters fit. So that's one diameter. There's two diameters, three diameters, four diameters, and so on. So let's measure this out. So that's one diameter. There's two. There's three and a little bit diameters. Well, that three and a little bit is what pi is. Pi is slightly more than three. So to work out the circumference of a circle, you just take the diameter and you multiply it by pi, and that will give you the circumference of a circle. And that works for any circle, regardless of the size. So that's circles. That's pretty much all of the areas of shapes. Uh, I'm going to leave you with this, which is just a diagram with all of the areas of shapes on there, so you can see them very easily. Uh, so we have rectangles and squares, uh, and parallelograms and rhombuses, where it's just perpendicular height times the base. We have triangles, which is just perpendicular height times the base divided by 2. And we have circles, which is pi r squared. It may be useful to write down the trapezium one, which is a plus b divided by 2 times the height. Hopefully that's helped you. Hopefully that's going to help you moving forward. If you are not sure where to do a bit of practice, the best places to visit are Dr. Frost Maths and Corbett Maths. They are fantastic resources to have a go at some maths. And hopefully you can come back in the next episode and we'll look at some 3D shapes. Thank you, it's Mr. Chowdhury. Have a wonderful day. Go be productive and enjoy your maths.